Hi guys. In my paper I studied the Baptist Biographies column in the Canadian Baptist in 1967. This column was published in the midst of Canada's centennial celebrations. I argue that the lives of the men described in this column were interpreted through a lens that was colored by an assumption of Canada's history as a Christian nation and a belief in a, in a great future for Canada in the broader context of Christendom. The Canadian Baptist, the newspaper for the Baptist Convention of Ontario and Quebec, had a key function as a forum for these ideas and their prescription for Central Baptist's future in 1967. My question throughout the paper is whether these historical figures, who were part of the Christendom Project, can inspire Canadian Baptists, and indeed any Christians, living in a post-Christian world. The first matter I address is methodological. <clears throat> Many historians have noted the dangers of using newspapers as historical sources, especially due to issues such as inaccuracy and editorial bias. However, through a discussion of the relevant historiography and a brief examination of Central Canadian Baptists' own ideas about the role of their newspaper, I argue not only that religious newspapers provide an effective gauge for its readership's opinions, but also that the newspaper itself was a crucial component in denominational growth, development, and identity. This argument is premised on the concept of a two-way relationship between newspapers and their readers, as well as the idea that newspapers themselves are involved in historical processes. Next, I provide a brief history of Baptists in Canada, demonstrating their belief and their work towards the establishment of a Christian Canada. This was demonstrated most clearly in Canadian Baptists working under a nation-building impulse that enthralled Canadian Protestants in the 19th century. I note, however, that Canadian Baptist identity and ideas of Christendom were fracturing during the 1960s. I then show that the Baptist Biographies column was intended to bolster Baptist identity and sought to encourage Baptists to seek inspiration in the Baptist contribution to Canada's Christian past as they worked toward a future which appeared to them to include a Christian Canada. Before my examination of the Baptist Biographies column, I briefly observe a number of statements in the Canadian Baptist published at the same time as the column. These celebrate the role of Canadian Baptists in Canada's development, and especially the role of the Canadian Baptist newspaper in that project. This context provides a key to understanding the intent and the thinking behind the Baptist Biographies column. The men described in the column included three missionaries. A.V. Timpany, Robert Lenny, and Dr. Silas Rand, an itinerant preacher named David Marks, and two major supporters of Canadian Baptist education, John Mockett Cramp and John Gilmore. <coughs> Each biography was quick to describe the men's conversion, their call to ministry, and their steadfast and faithful answer to God's call. The biographies also emphasized each man's contribution to the development of the Canadian Baptist cause and the construction of a Christian Canada. My argument is that the quote-unquote Baptist saints described in the Baptist Biographies column were interpreted through the lens of, a Canadian, of Canadian Baptist contribution to Christian Canada, and that the Canadian Baptist newspaper was itself significant in both the construction of that Christian Canada and the lens through which Canadian Baptists viewed their spiritual ancestors. These combined as an attempt to shore up Canadian Baptist identity in a turbulent decade in which Christian Canada appeared to be crumbling. They also prescribed Canadian Baptist's work for a Christian Canada with a great destiny. By way of conclusion, I ask if the figures examined in the Baptist Biographies column, who were caught up in the Christendom Project, have any value for Canadian Baptists today. Baptists in Canada today are living in a new situation for Christians in the West. Not only is the alliance between Christianity and the power of the state broken, but there is a growing dislike of Christianity. Indeed, there have been small attempts, some of which have been successful, at limiting the religious liberty of Christians in Canada. How can heroes from the context of Christendom inspire those of us who live in post-Christendom? The first step in answering this question, I think, lies in acknowledging that the motives, or at least some of the motives, of the Canadian Baptist heroes, as seen in the column, may not have been as pure as one would like to think. But then, they were human, so that should come as no surprise. In acknowledging this, we are also armed against the danger of putting men such as these on a pedestal where they do not belong. The second step lies in noting that each of these men encountered God in a profound way that changed their life, and they answered his call on their lives. In fact, they all devoted their entire lives to the work to which God called them. They were faithful, even when facing doubt and disaster. 
a large element of their faithfulness was no doubt rooted in their practices of piety for baptists in the nineteenth century it was assumed that one had a disciplined daily regimen that at the very least included significant time dedicated to reading scripture and prayer in addition to whatever other churchly duties one might have each day <clears throat> The third step is realizing that these Baptist men were part of a larger trajectory of dissent against the, the status quo and against uh, state churches. The Baptists' early existence was largely in protest to the establishment of the Church of England and its corollary restrictions on religious freedom. Baptists in the 17th century were actively persecuted. John Bunyan, for example, the author of uh, Pilgrim's Progress, spent 12 years in prison for his Baptist beliefs. Baptists and other nonconformists were eventually tolerated, but their rights and freedoms were continued, uh, were uh, restricted. Baptists for centuries had a strength of character born of tenacity and conviction in the face of ridicule and persecution. Imagine their position, disallowed from civil service, not allowed to build churches, and threatened with going to prison, all because they were trying to imitate the Christianity they encountered in the New Testament. Obviously, this is not Central Baptist context today, but it is possible that things in Canada could be moving in that direction in, in my lifetime, even. If Canadian Baptists in the 21st century can follow Christ by emulating Baptists of the past, even including those in the Baptist Biographies column who demonstrated faithfulness to God's call, the Church will grow. Let us immerse ourselves in Scripture and the history of the Baptist movement, which together will impel us to a radical Christian love of God and of neighbor, even in the face of persecution. Then we will be worthy to join the company of the saints.